praise. It is good for us to be here on this Mother's Day. I want to start out by saying Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there today and all the mothers that are joining us via Facebook and, and all over this land and country. I truly it is a blessing just to be in this place. Amen. Amen. God has been good to us, has brought us uh, one more time to Jackson Chapel CME Church. Amen. We come to lift him up. We come to worship him. For we know that he told us in his word that he's the spirit. And they that worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. Amen. So let us just lift him up today. How many of y'all feel good today? Amen. 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 God is uh, he's, he's deserving of all of our praise. So this time we're going to have, uh, this is our call to worship. Uh, the Lord is in his holy temple that all the earth keep silent before him. For this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in him. For the psalmist said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. So this time we're going to have a, a selection of praise. We're going to ask that you will stand to your feet as we worship in the Holy Spirit today. For as we lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
we remain standing. Let us now unite in the historical confession of our Christian faith. What do we believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, the only Son of our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From this to come to judge the quick of the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We're going to ask Reverend Bankhead to come now and lead us to the throne of grace. Let's bow our heads and a few words of prayer. Eternal God of Heavenly Father, so again and once more in this life, on this side of the grave that you have allowed a few of these our believing children to come together in thy holy name. Mm -hmm. We come first of all lifting up our hands in praise and glory and honor to the almighty and everlasting God. <coughs> we thank the Lord for this opportunity. Thank the Lord allowing us to see another Mother's Day, even though our mother's not here. Lord, we give you thanks and praise that we have enjoyed a mother while she was here on earth. Mm -hmm. And remember all the things that she did and how she raised us and brought us up to bring back joyous memories. Lord, the same goes that we could just hear our mother's voice one more time. We know we will not hear on this side. But one day when we meet together, we'll be able to say, Howdy, Mother. And they will never say goodbye again. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us down to Jackson Chapel one more time yeah. safely. Yeah. Thank you for the loving Jackson Chapel family. Thank you, Lord. We have open arms to welcome our servant here. Thank you, Lord, for your, the past you have planned over here. Yes. Yes. As he feels your word, from Sunday to Sunday. Yeah. Our hearts rejoice and our hearts do burn with joy and gladness to hear your word. Thank you, Lord, for the assistant here. Thank you, Lord, for all those who are present on the sound of my weak voice. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord, for the strength you have given us. We pray, O oh God, for those who grieve this morning yes. for the loss of a loved one. Yes. Continue, hold your arm around the Baker family. Yes. Give them assurance to know that you are with them, you have not forsaken them, nor will you leave them. Thank you, Lord, for giving us assurance that one day yes. that we're continuing to faith. Yes. And when we quit this walk of life, we'll be in your presence mm -hmm. throughout eternity. Yes. Thank you, Lord. your servant as he stand before us and break the bread of life, to count, declaring what thus said the Lord this morning. Yes. We know there's something greater to store. Mm -hmm. Then, Lord, help us to receive it with joyful hearts and govern ourselves accordingly. Bless the choir, they sing our praises. Yes. Then, Lord, open the hearts and the minds of these thou hearers, that we may receive your word and be glad in it and govern ourselves according to it. Mm -hmm. Lord, bless those who miss fortune this morning, those who don't have a mother, those who don't have a home, those who don't have bread on their table. Whatever you know that you feed them this morning, whatever the need is, you'll able to provide for them. Now keep us throughout this day. Keep us throughout the rest of our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we do pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Good morning, saints. It's good to be in the presence of the Lord one more time and thanking Him for the many blessings that He has bestowed upon us. For God is good not some of the time, but all of the time. Amen. We're going to take our reading from the 19th chapter of the Gospel according to St. John. It is in line with Mother's Day, but it also is in line with what our pastor has been bringing to us these last few weeks. And in the 25th verse of that 19th chapter, we're going to begin and just share with you a few morsels from heaven. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother, and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother, and the disciples standing by whom he loved, he said unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then said he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her unto his home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar and put it upon hyssop and put it to his mouth. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Praise be unto God. Amen. The meanest mother in the world. We had the meanest mother in the world. While other kids ate candy for breakfast, we had to have cereal, eggs, and toast. When others had a Pepsi and a Twinkie for lunch, we had to eat sandwiches. And you can guess our mother fixed us a dinner that was different from other kids had to. Mother insisted on knowing where we were at all times. You think we were convicts in prison. She had to know our, who our friends were and what we were doing with them. She insisted that if we said we would be gone for an hour, we would be gone for an hour or less. We were ashamed to admit it, but she had the nerve to break the child labor laws by making us work. We had to wash the dishes, make the beds, learn to cook, back in the floor, do laundry, and all sorts of cruel jobs. I think she would lie awake at night thinking of more things for us to do. She always insisted on us telling the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. By the time we were teenagers, she could read our minds. Then life was really tough. Mother wouldn't let our friends just honk the horn when they drove up. They had to come up to the door so she could meet them. While everyone else could date when they were 12, 13, we had to wait until we were 16. Because of our mother, we missed out on lots of things other kids experienced. None of us have ever caught, have been caught shoplifting, vandalizing others' property, or ever been arrested for a crime. It was all her fault. We never got drunk, took up smoking, stayed out all night, or a million other things other kids did. Sundays were reserved for church, and we never missed once. We knew better than to ask to spend the night with a friend on Saturdays. Now that we have left home, we are all God-fearing, educated, honest adults. We're, we're doing our best to be mean parents just like mom was. I think that's what is wrong with the world today. 
It just doesn't have enough mean moms anymore. Amen. Amen. Amen.
The Bible teaches us that God is a rewarder of those who diligently see him. So we're grateful today on this Mother's Day to be able to stand one more time. And how ironic is it that I was standing here, well actually I was sitting there and I was getting ready to stand and, and I looked and behold the bookmarker was Sunday, March the 18th, 2018. And it was the time that you celebrated Women's Day. <coughs> How I run that this little marker with this flower on this Mother's Day just staring me in the face. So again, I salute mothers. I salute you for everything that you do. I salute you for everything that you've done. And I even salute you for what you're gonna do. Because that job never ends. You know, we like to say, don't it, that we were wrong. Is that right? But when we're sick, or when we're in trouble, we still a, a mother's child. Is that right? right? So we just want to say once again, Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. And we come to now continue our series of preaching from the time after Jesus got up. We give honor to our Heavenly Father today. We give honor to His only begotten Son, Jesus the Christ, and we give honor to His precious Holy Spirit, for they all work together as one. To Reverend Grissom, to Reverend Bankhead, to Reverend Jones, he's done his task for the morning and didn't seem, seem to be robbery to come on to Jackson Chapel after preaching. Uh, at another church this morning. To all of you that are here, to all the mothers, to all the, the uh, children and friends and loved ones that are here today, it's just good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 We want you today for just a brief moment to turn your attention to the book of Acts chapter 2. <coughs> Acts chapter 2 beginning at verse number 1. And we're going to read 13 verses. Seems like a lot but it's really a lot of names and believe it or not, why well, I'm not going to skip any of them because I can pronounce all of them. <laughs> Acts chapter 2, beginning at verse number 1. And it reads as follows, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of rushing mighty wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. 
And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea and Cappadocia and in Pontus and Asia Phrygia and Pamphylia and Egypt and in the parts of Libya about Serene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongue the wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Then the others said, mocking them, these men are full of new wine. <laughs> May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. For this is God's word for God's people. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you now for yet another opportunity to come to stand and proclaim your word to this your people. Father, I ask you now that you allow me to decrease, that you may increase. Oh, Father, prepare our hearts, prepare our minds to receive your word. And Father, as we come, we, we want to say thank you. We thank you for everything that you have done for us. We thank you for these mothers that are gathered here in this place. We thank you for those mothers that are joining us on Facebook. And Father, we just pray today that you have your way. Whatever you see that we need, we ask that you supply. Take me now. Use me as you see fit. Now I ask that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable in your sight. For you, Lord, are my strength and you are my redeemer. In Jesus' name they say, Amen. 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 <coughs> the church say, Amen. Let us say amen again. Amen. Amen one more time. Amen. One for the Father, one for the Son, and one for the Holy Spirit. For they all work together as one. We want to remind us that on last Sunday we talked about the upper room preparation as the disciples and others waited and prepared for the coming of the Holy Spirit. The preparation we talked about that there was something that had to be done in order for them to receive what was coming. I talked about the preparation of the heart and how we are to prepare ourselves when we come to worship. So today we want to talk to you for just a few moments on the thought, the upper room experience. The upper room experience. Here, it is sit in to play. 
a setting of a group of people that had waited on the promise that Jesus had given them. If you remember, he told them to tarry and to wait on the promise of the Holy Spirit. Do you not know that when we wait, when we are patient, when we dwell, and when we are in anticipation of God's work, God will do a wonderful work. Is that right? He will show up in the midst of these situations and do a work that we could never have imagined. The author here begins this particular text by saying, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come. In other words, when the day had gotten there and uh, it was in full operation, it said that they were all in one place and on one accord. I'm just wondering here that as we gather on this Mother's Day, how many of us in this one place got the same mindset, are here for one purpose and one purpose only? Oh yeah, it's okay to celebrate mothers. It's okay to, to acknowledge the goodness of our mothers and everything they have done. It's okay to come and join the show, mother, uh, our love. But I want us to understand something. When we come together in God's house, God wants to do a work. They were all together in one place and on one accord. And because they were prepared, right, because they had, had carried there for a period of time, when the Bible says that while they were there suddenly, I need to stop right there for just a minute. Suddenly, I hear folks say, you know, God's still working on me. I still got this issue that I, I've been dealing with for 49 years that God's still working on me. He's he going to get rid of it eventually. Oh, y'all need to hear me. You need to quit lying on God. It don't take God no long time to do nothing. You got to commit yourself so that he can do the work. The only reason why he's still working on us because why we're, we're still dodging because we're not ready to do any better. It says, suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Now can you imagine if God did that right now, I'm not just talking about this building, but I'm talking about if, 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 if all of God's people would come together on one accord, Putin would have a chance. Huh? Oh, y'all don't hear me. If, if all of God's children would come together on one accord, we, we would be able to fight anything because the Bible says that no weapon formed against us shall be able to prosper. Yeah. Oh, the Bible teaches us here and, 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 and in this third verse it says and there appeared unto them clothed in tongues of fire and it set upon each of them and, and I began to but Lord, I began to study this and I began to look at this and, and it showed me something, right? When I, when I looked at this, I said, now, when they talked about these tongues, I want you to see what happened. 
There was a reason why this transpired. There was a reason why this was necessary because there was, you're going to see in just a few moments that there were some other folk that needed to hear what was going on and they were from all different places in the world and these people began to what? Speak in their language. Oh, y'all don't hear me. It was necessary for these tongues to be divided because the people were divided and they needed to hear that God is good and God is good all the time. And it says that, that, that when this thing took place and it said these flowing tongues of fire and that they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Oh, y'all can hear me. Nobody gave it to them but the Spirit. In other words, the Spirit guided them in what they were saying. You know, everybody that be babbling ain't not speaking in. Oh, I wish I had somebody. But this upper room experience brought about some changes that we need to be aware of because a lot of people feel like that if you don't do certain things, if you don't do this, you're not saved. If you don't do that, you're not saved. If you don't do this, you're not saved. But you ought to do something. I wish I had something. All right, all right. As the Spirit gave the mother, too often we are guided by the wrong things. If we would allow the, the Lord to lead us and direct us in what we do, we will find that God will show up and he will show out. So when the Spirit came, it talks about these people that were dwelling at Jerusalem. Jews out of devout men and, and, and uh, 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 every nation under heaven and said, now he said that when they heard about what was taking place, that they came together. And I stopped there. And Kate, I said, now, isn't that something that all of these folk heard something was going on? They heard about these folk and how the Spirit had showed up. Some came with the right idea. Some came with the wrong idea. Some came with no idea. Oh, I wish I had somebody. Well, but they came. Is that right? They showed up in the Bible says, and they were amazed and marveled, saying once enough, behold, are not all of these Galileans and they were wondering how in the world can folk that are Galileans speak all of these different languages that we can understand what they're saying. Is it not uh, amazing that if we would do what God says do, that he will make everything all right? He will fix it. He will open blind eyes. He will fix us where we would come to worship with a mindset of wanting to worship. How is it that this can be so? Well, I'm glad you asked. The reason why is because when we back up and think about what happened in Acts 1, Jesus commanded them to do something. He said, I need you to go back to Jerusalem. I need you to go and wait on what I'm about to send you. And what happened? They went and did what they were commanded to do. See, somebody missing this. You ever wonder why we're in the predicament that we're in? Because we don't do what he tells us to do. They went and they waited and they prepared for this promise. And when we prepare for the promise, when we prepare for what Jesus has already told us would 
take place. He told the disciples in the gospel as recorded by St. John, the 14th chapter. He said, let not your heart be troubled. But you believe in God, believe also in me. He said, in my father's house are many mansions. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. And he said, well, if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. See, what it tells me is that he's already given us the promise. He told us not to worry about anything. He told us not to be troubled because of things that are going on in this world. Yes, there are so many things that are happening. People breaking people out of prison. Yes, young people are not Attending worship anymore. Am I right? Yes. Uh, we used to make sure, if nothing else, our children would grow up in the admonition of the Lord. If you remember the, the poem that I read about the meanest mother in the world. Some of us can identify to the fact that too many of our children have choices. No child, Frank, reference two, three years old, ought to be able to tell their parents what they like and what they don't like. Or oh, wish I had somebody. Uh, they shouldn't be able to do anything they want to do. We didn't know anything to skate about time out. We, we, we knew nothing about standing in the corner. But one thing we learned was how to dodge telephones. And we learned how to go out and try to find the smallest switch yes, Lord. Yeah. that we could. Yeah. But we found out that even when we done that, that we had to go get more so they could be tied together to make a bigger switch. Yes, what I'm saying to us today is that when we come together All right, on one accord, God can do a wonderful work. But we allow the world to lead God's people instead of God's people leading the world. How the Bible says these Parthians and Medes and Elamites, the people from Mesopotamia and Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia in Egypt and in parts of Libya about serene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, the Cretes and the Arabians said that we hear all this in our own language. But it said these were the wonderful works of God. And then they were all amazed or in doubt saying one to another, what does this mean? Do you not know when the world put you yes, see God's people doing things the right way? They'll start to ask the question, what does this mean? And what I believe what they will be saying after that rough bank head is that I believe God's people have had an upper room experience. Uh, yeah, they have waited on God to move 
And God has begun to move upon the face of the earth. Well, and and uh, when God uh, began to move, you'll see that things will begin to change. When God begins to move, uh, uh, I believe that uh, young people won't be rising up against their parents and trying to tell their parents uh, what to do instead of the parents telling their children what to do. Uh, we will go back to raising our children in the way God would have us to raise them. Uh, what mean of this? Some might say that they are drunk with new wine. But uh, what I want us to know today now is that sometimes uh, we need to refer back uh, to an upper room experience uh, because God uh, wants to show up uh, in the midst of our trouble. Uh, ain't God a good God? Uh, I believe uh, the reason why uh, they didn't understand uh, what was going on. Uh, they didn't know nothing uh, about the Holy Ghost. Uh, ain't God all right? Uh, are you wondering uh, why some people uh, can pat their feet uh, and wave their hands? Uh, ain't God all right? Uh, have you ever wondered uh, why some folk uh, don't mind uh, saying praise the Lord? Uh, ain't God all right? Because uh, they had an experience uh, with Jesus. Uh, Mary's baby uh, ain't God all right. Uh, what I'm trying to tell you, uh, when you've been through something, uh, and the Lord uh, has brought you out, uh, you don't mind. sick room, I was lying there, nobody knew if I would be alive, but I had an upper room experience, tell me Peter, what did you say, my Bible tells me that Peter stood up in the midst of the crowd, they do you not know, it's only 12 o'clock, it ain't drinking time. These folk are not drunk like you think, but what you're experiencing, what you're experiencing is what was a prophesied by the prophet Joel. When the Lord said, in the last day, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, thank God all right. What did he say, Peter? Peter said, the young men have something to do. The young women will have something to do. The old men will have something to do. Ain't God a good God? I'm making ready now. I'm getting ready to leave you alone. But I know something about an upper room experience. Can I get an amen? Anybody out there ever tried God? Do you know that he's all right? Tell us he can do 
exceedingly and abundantly above what we could ever think or even ask. Your daughters will prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. He said, on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And then he talked about, he said, you see wonders. Have you seen some things that you hadn't been seeing before? Are you experiencing some things that you never experienced before? If you think, if you think I'm wrong, for y'all ladies that got a mirror, mm -hmm. take your mirror out your purse and look at your face. Mm -hmm. And look at that mask you got on. Never in a million years that we would think that we'd have to walk around yeah. looking like criminals. <laughs> I wish I had somebody. I'm just telling you the truth. Times have changed. But in order for us to make it, we have to make a change as well. God wants to pour out His Spirit. The Bible says it's not God's will that any man should perish. But it's left up to us to make the decision. And they waited patiently on the promise. And look what happened when the promise showed up. The one man that denied Jesus, the one that was scared because he didn't want to be associated with him. When that spirit came, that's when the power came. Folks, let me tell you, when the Spirit comes, the Lord Jesus told you, you shall receive power. Not many days from now. You shall receive power. And when the Spirit came, you talk about power. Yeah. And things begin to change. Old scared Peter got him started preaching. Preached stronger than he ever preached before. Because what? He waited on the promise. And he encountered an upper room experience. How about you? How about you? The doors of the church are open. As we open the doors, we extend now the invitation to Christian discipleship. There may be someone here today that don't know the Lord and the partner that's in. And you're ready for that experience, that life-changing experience. That experience that will carry you all the way through everything, through every situation, through every circumstance. If you connect with the Lord, He will. He will provide. So there be one today. Also, there may be someone here today that don't have a church home. And you're looking for a church home and you want Jackson Chapel to be your place of worship. You may come <coughs> however you desire. You may come by letter. You may come by Christian experience or you may come as a candidate for baptism. Howsoever you come. The Lord said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man will let me in, he said, I will come in and I will sup with you. The be one today. This is the time. Let us pray. 
Father, Lord of hosts, <coughs> our keeper and our provider. Father, we thank you now. We thank you for the promise. Because we realize that if he had not come, we wouldn't have the power, the power that we have right now. We realize that if he had not come, there would be many sleepless nights. We realize if he had not come, we wouldn't have a comfort to keep us in perfect peace. Father, we say thank you right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We thank you for everything that you have done for us. We thank you for just a portion of our health and strength. Thank you, Lord. Even though sometimes we're weak, we still realize that you're strong. Even though sometimes we're sick, we realize you're still a doctor in a sick room. Oh, Father, we, even though sometimes we're in trouble, you're still a lawyer. There's never lost the case. So we just say thank you now. We thank you for everything that has transpired in this place. And Father, we pray that as we go, we go with the same mindset as was stated by Paul. Let this mind be in us which is also in Christ Jesus. We thank you for this choir. We thank you for Sister Young and little Sister Young for this presentation today of this Mother's Day. And Father, as we go, let us keep our eyes stayed on you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. The people of God said, Amen. 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 Amen.